Hey guys, Edward here again. I wanted to do a quick short video basically upgrading from a former AMD generation uh, chipset and CPU to the newer Ryzen chipset, in this case the X370 motherboard and CPU without reinstalling, in this case, Windows 7. Uh, I've actually done this uh, last year when Ryzen was officially um, initially introduced and uh, so I wanted to actually just go ahead and a quick short video of a couple of steps and pre-steps that I took from upgrading from here to here. Now this actually could probably work with even the AM2 uh, AM3 socket for sure. I will be upgrading from AM3 Plus to Ryzen AM4 and I uh, just want to do a little quick video since a couple of people have asked me um, directly about um, using Ryzen on Windows 7 in general. I will actually do a further video down the line installing Windows 7 from scratch. In this case, I'll just be using a previous Windows 7 installation on the former AM3, in this case, uh, 4 or 6 core CPU. I believe actually the one I have is a 6 core. To the Ryzen 1700 CPU we see over here. And uh, this motherboard originally was reallocated from a previous build that was upgraded to the newer X470 chipset. This CPU is brand new. And I'll go ahead and just uh, give that a shot. Now again, I don't recommend jumping from one chipset to another uh, without reinstalling the OS. Uh, this is just for experimental purposes and just... Here's a computer with the old AM3 Plus Gigabyte motherboard and 6300 6-core CPU. That's going to be removed to make way for this uh, X370 board and Ryzen 1700 CPU here, still brand new in this box. So these are, will be installed. And over here on the screen, I already went ahead and uh, did some prep work here. There's uh, some details here for you. I've already went ahead and uninstalled the LAN driver and USB 3 driver since uh, this board does have USB 3 ports. I also uninstalled the sound card driver as well too. I did leave the display um, video driver here just for the time being. Uh, it is an AMD card in there so it should be alright. Here's some details. FX6300 CPU with 8 gigs of RAM. I'm not sure why the memory is a little less uh, for some reason. I'm hoping that's something that will go away once we're done with this. So let's go ahead and pump in this new board and we'll get started. I just want to show here we have a little wireless keyboard and mouse that I'll be using for this. And just before we go ahead and start ripping out some hardware, I wanted to demonstrate here that as well, I've already downloaded chipset drivers uh, and other drivers here, LAN drivers, audio drivers, and other software we'll probably need for this uh, once we get the board and CPU up and running and uh, Windows 7 boots up. We'll definitely need those chipset drivers to get USB ports working and because our keyboard and mouse will not be working. So. Um, just keep that in mind if this is something you actually do plan to do. You probably should have all your drivers ready to go on the hard drive. All right, here we have the new board and CPU installed. In this case, an X370 MSI board and the Ryzen 1700 CPU I showed you earlier, fresh out of the box. This board has been used previously, but the processor hasn't. And uh, over here we have the old board. The gigabyte port, this little I.O. bracket. Uh, I didn't take out the CPU or the cooler yet, I'll just leave it there for the time being. Memory, I removed it completely. So, I'll go ahead and uh, plug this in and we'll just see how it all goes down. I just down. want to show one more thing here. The key to this whole thing to work here, this method, is the PS2 port. You can see back here, this port does have one PS2 port. The X470 motherboard I reviewed in another video also has a PS2 port, making this uh, process quite a bit easier. And uh, of course we have a little traditional PS2 mouse. Okay, she's all plugged up. We'll go ahead and uh, get this computer a little closer and turn her on. Some lights have come up. Let's see what the monitor says. seeing a blue light probably gonna get that sign that the CPU and memory have changed and indeed they 16 have 16 gigs of RAM the 1700 CPU and uh, I need to go to setup obviously because hardware here has changed despite the fact that I have used this 
keyboard before. Now, right now, the wireless keyboard and mouse uh, combo here that I'm using is working off the USB port. Once I boot into Windows, though, that will change, and we'll be, used, we'll be using the PS2 mouse to install some drivers. Uh, everything looks normal here. Uh, I'm just going to... Right. We just have to set the boot priority to be our SSD with our Windows 7 installation on it. In this case, it would be the Intel SSD we have here. And uh, I usually disable all the rest of the stuff for the time being. I'll just leave it here. And uh, we'll go ahead and save and reboot. side post screen probably going to reboot again I'm going to see the splash post screen again and finally it's going to boot up now one of the first things you're going to see is a lot of hardware being picked up and detected It's already starting to install itself. No blue screen of death so far. Scroll down. Right now I'm using the PS2 mouse. Does not work at all. Start button for the mouse. So right now I'm using purely PS2 mouse, and here we have a bunch of PCI devices, a CPU being picked up, bridges, a video card also being picked up. I'm sure it'll probably be working normally by the next reboot. Usually it doesn't take too long. Um, something that slows this process down usually when looking for drivers is when it starts to look online and Windows updates, but being that there's no LAN uh, Ethernet port um, driver installed, it will not go with connect to the internet whatsoever. Let's scroll down and see what else we got here. Some more things. There's your PS2 mouse being installed, which is funny because it's already working. And yep, the list just keeps going and going. Whoa, that is a lot of stuff. While this is going on, let me just go ahead and um, show you that we do have a Ryzen CPU here, and there it is. Oh, what do you know? The memory uh, thing is now full 16 gigs as opposed to a little small percentage tossed aside for whatever reason. Let's go ahead and uh, minimize that. Now, what could make this a little easier for you is to be able to use a keyboard and mouse. At this point in time, I'm just hooking up a, a mouse. I'm pretty sure there's a way to actually have a keyboard and mouse hooked up to one PS2 port, something. Again, more things being installed. It does say device driver was not successfully installed. That is perfectly normal. As you can see, a lot of, a, a lot of items here are not going to be recognized just purely out of the box. And that's why a little folder on the side is going to be. I think it pretty much finished everything here. We got the prompt to reboot, so let's go ahead and reboot. And of course, we got the unsupported hardware. You've detected that I am now using a Ryzen CPU. There's a little trick to bypass that. But let's go ahead and reboot right now. Again, 
We'll do optimizations in the bio set another time. It's not really the point of this video. Just wanted to demonstrate this little experiment here. And uh, we're booting up again. Clearly a difference in boot up time between the two CPUs. Same hardware other than just the memory, the board, and obviously the CPU. Back to the same screen again. Seems like the video card has still officially kicked in. And looks like we're good to go there. So let's go ahead and install some drivers. The first thing obviously to install will be your chipset driver. So immediately, if you haven't already extracted it from whatever downloadable file you downloaded in, just extract it here. Shouldn't be a problem with your PS2 mouse. Takes a moment. Chipset's always pretty big. I do believe these AMD um, chipset drivers do actually check online for a newer version. Obviously in this case that's not going to happen because we do not have any internet access whatsoever. Accept and install. Checking for new drivers. There you go. Let's say here currently installed. I am guessing this is the Radeon software or the old chipset drivers, which could be some other combination of the two. So let's see what pops up here. Usually, if you're doing a fresh installation of Windows 7, which I may demonstrate in another video, you'll see that none is installed on the left side here. So still searching. And there we have the local driver. And let's just do custom install just to check it out. All this wonderful stuff it says it's going to install, so let's do... Well, clean install sounds like a good idea. So maybe we'll give that a shot. There we go. Clean install. And yes, a reboot is usually involved in clean installs, so let's go ahead and hit yes. Sorry about the motorcycle driving by. <laughs> Seems like I clicked on a link there. Again with the unsupported software, hardware from Windows 7. We'll go ahead and uh, close this for the moment. So right now, as far as I know, it's uninstalling former chipset drivers or even the video card driver that uh, is installed for this uh, ATI card in there. Um, hmm, that's something that actually you didn't really think about. So it seems like that's currently being uninstalled. And there you go. That's all right. No, it's actually looking to install a new version of it anyway. There's a good chance that this chipset driver software may actually have a newer display driver on it, so I guess we'll see that. Something else to keep in mind when you're attempting to do this. Maybe we can and just And after continue. a couple of times of flickering, the system will reboot on its own. Reboot, where the chipset installation will continue and um, install everything else. Uh, USB drivers, chipset drivers, the SATA driver, um, some USB 3 drivers as well too, and uh, other whatnot drivers that need to be installed for this uh, hardware and chipset to work. Once again, click on me. And that window should reappear. One of the lowest resolutions I've seen in a while. What is it, 600 by 400?
So let me go ahead and just fix up the resolution a bit and just wait for the installation window to pop up again. As you can see, my PS2 mouse is still working, but no response. So I went ahead and changed the resolution to fill up the whole monitor and uh, just waiting on here. It does seem like, I believe it might actually be installing the new uh, video drivers. I guess we'll see after another reboot. But, uh, ah, so chipset. Seems like it's installed, so we'll go ahead and give this a reboot. And, uh, oh, keyboard and mouse is not working. Start button's working here, too. So USB ports up and online. Go ahead and reboot this right now, then. As long as everything, the usual basic stuff is working, and USB ports are working, everything else is just gravy at this point. BIOS optimizations. Installing LAN. Ethernet drivers, USB 3 drivers, and anything else you might want to. So, so far this has turned out to be a success. Again, I don't 100% recommend going jumping from one chipset to another with the same Windows 7 installation. Um, click on myself again. But, I remember I gave this a shot last year with success, um, and now with new BIOS updates and chipset drivers, it's actually gone out definitely much smoother than it did last time, jumping from an older generation AMD chipset um, to the current Ryzen AM4. And, oh, why am I still using that? As you can see, this is now working, and so is the mouse. And just wanted to open up the My Properties window here. Here we see Ryzen 1700 at 3 gigahertz, 16 gigs of RAM, which is awesome. And the Windows 7 score, which no one really cares about, but there it is. Here's the PC again. All good to go. Well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, video here, guys. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please go ahead and um, let me know. Shoot them out. If you like this video, shoot a like as well, too. Pretty cool looking computer here. And I really hope you enjoy this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.